Okay, these are the video directions for completing uh, SOLIDWORKS problem number 19, the latch plate. Uh, we're going to start off by opening up a GHSA inch border to start our drawing on. So I'm going to go up here to the top where it says File New. Open my new SOLIDWORKS document. Uh, I see my SOLIDWORKS template ta tab is open. I'm going to look for a GHSA inch, and that'll be the first one in the second row. Now again, notice as I left click on it, I see my preview over here to the right. Looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now again, as we've been talking before, SOLIDWORKS thinks we're going to put a part in here, which we uh, have not created yet. So what I'm, the first thing I want to do is go over here to the management toolbar to the left, hit the red X and turn it off, and hit the F key to center up my drawing. Now the drawing we're going to do today is going to be kind of unique. So we're going to use a mirroring tool um, to mirror some things over. Now we have not used that before. Um, but once you see it, it's pretty, it's pretty slick and unique. Um, and we'll use some more mirroring tool in the later weeks to come. But I'm going to first go to my sketch toolbar tab at the top. And the first thing I want to do is just basically draw a center line kind of right across the middle of my page. So I'm going to go under my line tool up top, drop down the arrow, and click on the word center line. At this point, I'm just going to be a little bit inside this left-hand border. I'm going to left-click and pull to just inside the right-hand side border. Left-click again. Hit Escape to turn your tool off. Okay, now this tool, this line is kind of right in the middle sitting here. I'm going to basically put mine kind of right where it's at. It looks good right about there. And this tool, or this line, excuse me, will be the line I'm going to mirror things over. Okay, so I'm going to build half of this part. So I'm going to build the lower half of this. And I'm going to mirror it over to the top. Okay. Now, to do this, what I'm going to do is start with my line tool. Okay. I'm going to create a couple things. So I'm going to start from the very back here. And I'm going to start by attaching to the line. I'm going to pull straight down. I'm going to pull at a slight angle. Pull at a second angle. Now, again, making sure because SolidWorks wants to think for you. I want to make sure nothing's showing up before I click my line. I'm going to left click and pull out uh, a little bit here and then left click and go straight up but don't touch this line i'm gonna actually make this short so i'm gonna come in just about a half inch short of that line left click and pull in i'm gonna left click and hit escape now at this point i'm gonna go back and turn my line tool on one more time i'm gonna go back here to the back end again come here to this or or the uh, excuse me center line left click on it draw a line slightly down I don't want to get caught on that line there. So I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter. Okay. Uh, actually, in this case, I'll go just between them. Left click. I'm going to pull in. Left click and hit escape. Now I'm going to start using some of my dimensioning tools to get this thing into place. Okay. So I'm going to turn my smart dimension. And basically, I'm going to work a couple things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and from the back. I know that the distance from this line here to this line right here is going to be 0.8. And that is, again, from the answer key that I've provided for you. Uh, the angle of this line back here, so I'm just going to kind of work my way from the back. It's going to be 135 degrees, so I'm going to pull that, type in 135. Okay, I'll just keep it right about there. That looks fine either way. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to get this uh, measurement for this angle here. So I'm going to hit this flat line here and this angle line to the right and pull to my right. And I'm going to type in 15. Adjust that so it sits towards the center. I'm then going to kick from uh, this corner here to this corner here of the 15-degree line. Pull straight down. We're going to make that 1.6 and enter. Now, I'm going to go ahead from the front to this very back here, pull this down, and this is going to be 6.3. I'm then going to do some things up top here. I'm going to do the distance from this line to this line right here. I'm going to make that 0. 0.6. And then I'll flip my arrowhead to the inside by hitting the little dot at the back. Now, at this point, I'm going to stop my dimensioning because I've actually got to do a couple more things. I need to round off this corner, and I need to add two circles to kind of tie all this together so I can get this least looking right. 
So I'm going to exit my tool right now by hitting Escape. Turns off my Smart Dimension. I'm now going to go back to a tool we've used before called the Fillet Tool. Okay, it's right here in the uh, Sketch Toolbar, right next to the Polygon Tool, right below the Ellipse Tool. I left click. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to change the fillet parameters. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I want to change the fillet size. According to the answer key, that fillet should be 0.56. Once you have that in there, come to this corner, left click on it, and you will see the fillet in yellow. Essentially what the computer is going to do, it's going to cut off that line there and this line here, and then add a tangent arc to these two lines. As soon as you see that, hit your green check mark. I'll pull this, oops, get out of the tool, sorry. Pull this down a little bit, and that looks good. Turn on my circle tool. I'm going to draw a circle somewhere around in here. Another one out here to the right-hand side of that. Hit escape to turn off your circle tool. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to add a quick relationship between these two circles of horizontal. So I'm going to hold my control key and pick the center of each circle and hit the word horizontal. Check mark. All right, now the key here is I'm actually going to make these things equal. I'm going to go ahead and dimension this one here, and I'll probably delete this dimension a little bit later because I'm going to move it to the top. But I'm going to go ahead and dimension these circles at 0.5. And what I'm going to do to so I don't have to add a whole bunch of dimensions and take them off is I'm going to add a relationship between the left circle and the right circle of equals. So I'm going to hold my control key, hit the left circle. Hit the right circle. Make sure you're hitting the outside edges, not the center points. Come over to your left and make them equal. Then hit your green check mark. Now the key to making this work is that this, a couple different things actually. This circle here is what we call concentric to this arc. That means they share the same center. So we're going to use our control key to add a concentric relationship between this left-hand circle and this arc below. So holding my control key, I'm going to hit this lower left arc, or the 0.56 fillet, and I'm going to hit the outside of this circle right above it, and I'm going to come over here to the left where it says concentric. And what that will do, it will take these two points you see right now and put them together, meaning they're sharing the same center. So I hit concentric, and those will move. I hit my green check mark. Now I need to add a dimension between the center of each of these circles. I'll pull that below, and that dimension should be 3.5. Okay, now you notice there's an overlap here. That's because we have to add one more relationship between the point of this circle or center point of the circle and this corner. We need those to be vertical to each other. So I'm going to hold my control key, click the center of this right circle, control key, this vertex, and make them vertical. Hit your check mark. I'm going to back up a little bit to see what we got. So far, it looks good. I'm going to adjust this dimension, move this up a little bit and out of the way. So, so far, everything I need is there. I do also need a dimension from this center point of the left circle to that center or center line above a distance of 1.5. Okay, so this is what we're looking at right now. Okay, so if you're looking at this drawing, it's very similar on the lower half to what our answer key looks like. Okay, now we're not quite done yet. I'm just going to make a few adjustments here, pull some things up a little bit closer to give myself some space. What I need to do now is I've got to add, there is a little bit of an arc right here I've got to add in. And it's unique how this is done because it's actually done with a combination of two circles blended in with each other and then trimmed off. Okay. So in this case, um, watch this part really carefully. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up for you right now. All right. First thing I need to do is I need to get a circle that is basically going to be on this line right here. Okay, this one is 0.8. So I'm going to go here and just anywhere on this line. Don't get caught at midpoint, though. I'm just going to click on this line somewhere and draw me a circle. Now I'm going to go ahead and smart dimension this circle. 
The key on this one is it says that the radius of this, and I'm going to kind of pull this. I'm going to end up ultimately deleting this and re-adding it on. But I'm going to pull this down, and I'm going to make that, it's 0.4 is the radius. And so if I put 0.4 and I know my relationship between radius and diameter is times 2, I can type that in as an equation and hit enter. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and above this center line up here, I'm going to draw a second circle. So I'm going to draw a circle way up here. Okay, and it's going to be pretty darn big. All right. Now, I have to add a relationship between this lower circle that I just added on a 0.8 and this upper circle center by holding my control key and making these two vertical. Okay. I need to also dimension this big circle. Now, this big circle, if you look at the answer key, this is one with a radius of 2. So I'm actually going to dimension this. If you know that radius of 2 times 2 gives me my diameter. So I should have a diameter of 4 here. Okay, now there's two things that have to happen. First of all, the diff, uh, from the center here, between the center here and here, this is going to be 1.6. Okay, 1.6. And I'm eventually deleting this and re-adding it on because it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause some problems. But notice as soon as I did that, this circle came down and shifted right on top of this one. Okay, so you can kind of see that little arc start to shape out here. But I also need to get in the right spot. So I'm going to take from this center here to the very back line here, and this distance is going to be 3.3. .3. Enter. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. Now, it looks a little jumbled up, and that's okay, because we're going to come back and adjust, take a couple dimensions off, and re-add them. Okay, but if you look carefully, you can kind of see where this arc is going to be. The arc that you see on the answer key is this arc right here, plus this little bit of arc right here. The rest of this is all going to get trimmed off. So with that said, let's go up to our Trim Entities tool. I'm going to do Trim to Closest. I'm going to trim off that piece right there and this part of the circle here. So there's part of that arc you see. I'm going to trim off this part of the circle here and here. Oops, that's a dimension. I already know that. Okay, and then I'm going to trim off this upper part of this circle here. Trim off the back end of that circle. I already know that's a dimension. At this point, I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to highlight this upper circle for a second. Hit Delete. Okay, now you can see there's that dimension and this is this dimension. All I'm doing is dragging them. Okay, I'm going to trim one more piece, which would be that one right there. Oh, I know what this one is. Never mind. This one is this dimension back here. Okay, so I'm going to hit delete for a second. Okay, I'm going to make sure that point, yep, it's locked on. We're good. Now, at this point, I'm going to delete this point eight, delete, come back and re-add it on. Now I'm going to pull this to the inside like so, left click, check mark, and I'm going to flip this arrowhead by hitting the dot on the back. So now it looks just like the answer key. We'll get the plus signs in at the end. I'm going to delete this diameter 4 for right now. Okay, And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to dimension to the inside and pull this like so. Okay, Inside and left click. Check mark. Okay. Now, last but not least, I'm also going to come in, and you'll notice this back corner right here is filleted. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to take on my fillet tool, but this back corner is supposed to be 0.25. So instead of 0.56, I'm going to put 0.25, enter. Come here and click on this corner. I see the yellow there. Hit my check mark. Check. Now this one I'm going to eventually delete off and add to the other side, but that's okay. We'll leave it right there. Okay, so at this point, we are ready to do what's called mirror. Okay, I've got this part here done. So what I'm going to do is take the mirroring tool, and I'm going to take these pieces and flip it over the line so it connects so I have an upper part. How do I do that? Okay, if you go over here to your sketch toolbar, we've done offset a lot. Okay, we did linear and circular sketch patterns also. But if you look right above that, there's one called mirror entities. Okay, so I'm going to click on this, Mirror Entities. And the first thing it wants to know, well, the first thing I want to do is, what do I want to copy? 
So be careful on how what you, what you click on here. So I'm going to start clicking all these lines. I'm going to click the vertical, this radius, small circle, bottom line, small circle, this line, 15 degrees, the 135 line, the back line, this line inside, this little 0.25 fillet, horizontal line, 0.4 arc, 2.0 arc, and this upper line. So essentially every line you see here, I've highlighted. Now, we're going to copy it and mirror it about. Well, if I click inside here, where do you think we're going to mirror this? We're going to mirror it about this line. And what you should now see is a ghost image in yellow of all the things you copied. When you see that, hit your check mark, and now you've got the upper half. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to adjust a couple things. I'm going to bring this 3.3 .3 a little bit higher. Okay, I'm going to add a couple more dimensions. For instance, I'm going to take the 0.25 off of this side. I'm going to add it back over here. And then this is not a big deal. You could have kept that, but I'm going to add this over here so I can make it look like the drawing and hit the dot. I have my 1.8, so I'm going to add a few more dimensions. I'm going to go from this line here to this line here to add in the 1.6. It will be driven. And the reason it's driven, it already knows 0.8. And then when you flip it back over, well, 0.8 plus 0.8 is 1.6. We're just going to go ahead and accept that because we want to see that number. Okay, I'm going to continue looking for other dimensions. I got my 0.56, the bottom. I'm going to get rid of this dimension down here. I'm going to come back up top and dimension it up here. Okay, and hit a check mark. Now it says four holes behind here. So I'm going to go over to my dimension text box, put my cursor in behind that caret right there after the word dim, space four holes. Oops, now I would mark myself wrong because it should be caps lock. Hit your check mark. Okay, I'm going to add another one I forgot to add in. I got to add in a dimension from this here to this here, this side. I forgot to add in that 0.94 earlier. I should have done that in the beginning. Okay, grab this and readjust. Okay, lots of moving around. I'm just going to bring these back in, tighten everything up a little bit. Okay, that looks good there. Um, I've got my two, my four. Uh, from this line to this line here, I'm going to get probably an error because it's going to tell me that it already knows this is 1.2. So say OK. And then from this circle up top to this circle below should be three. It's going to probably tell me an error. Yep, because I already know 0.5 plus 0.5 is three. I'm just going to kind of work these out a little bit. Okay, so the left side looks good. So at this point, I have all my dimensions in here. This is pretty good shape right now. I'm actually almost done. However, I've got a few things I've got to add in. Okay, you'll notice on the answer key, there's a bunch of center marks or plus signs on this paper. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my annotation toolbar right now. And over to the far right, I'm going to hit the word center mark. The first thing I want to do is I want to hit the, or hit the outside edge of all four of these circles. And once you've done that, I want you to hit your green check mark. Now, turn on your center mark again. You'll notice I have four very small plus signs. They're not as big as these ones here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on all these arcs. I'm going to click one there, here, this corner, and this rounded corner over here. Now, I don't want these extra lines, so i got to take these off. Now, the way to do that, excuse me, is if you look to your left, I can come over here and adjust the way those look with this management bar. What I want you to do where it says display attributes, I want you to uncheck the use document defaults. Left click. Okay. Then I want you to uncheck the extended lines. And by doing that, what it'll do is it'll take off the outside lines and only leave the small plus symbols. Uncheck that box. And now you'll see one, two, three, four smaller center marks. Once you've seen that, hit your check mark. F key. Okay, last but not least, we have some center lines going between all these circles. So now I'm going to go back to my sketch toolbar, turn on my center line tool, and we are just simply going to connect center to center to center to center and around. So I'm essentially just drawing a big box. 
And at that point, the only thing left to add is our title at the bottom. So what I'm going to do right now is go back to my annotation toolbar, hit my note tool, go right below the 6.3 here, and I'm actually going to probably shove some things up a little bit, but I'm going to drop this in. Formatting box, I'm going to keep it Arial, font size 12, bold, underline, centered. Caps lock on, type in the following, SWX problem number 19, latch plate. As soon as you have that, hit your check mark and then adjust your title as necessary. Now for me, I'm going to bring some of these dimensions in a little bit tighter so I can create some space here. Bring my 6.3 up a little bit. And that gives me a little bit more room for my title. Okay, and at this point, the last thing I want to do, and you can see in the corner, is tell me I have not saved. So let's go up to our file, Save As. I would like you to make sure you save this in your H drive, your name, H drive right here, under your CAD folder. And if you've created your flat layout folder, double click there and type in ACC19, underscore your last name. And if you want to add the period you're in, that'd be fine. And hit Save. Okay, we're almost done with this part. The last thing I need to do here to finish this is to change up my title block. So where it's the solver's drawing, we are going to double click there and type in the following. Latch plate. Check outside of it, left click and grab and adjust as necessary. GHS student, double click on that. First initial of your first name, last name. Check outside and adjust. Today's date, double click, 9, 25, 19. That's good right there. Scale remain one to one. Put your period in there. Adjust as necessary. I'm gonna hit my F key to double check everything's there and it looks good. I'm going to hit my save button at the top to make sure I don't lose any of my information. And then I'm going to finalize this by hitting my print button. Now, again, if you're not sure what paper is printing on, it should be on a letter size paper. So we want to make sure we're in the right printer, which is L108. Page setup. I want you to make sure you're on letter size paper, which it should be defaulted to, and that it's at 100% scale. If those two things show up, you are ready to go. Hit OK. And when you're ready to print, hit OK one more time. As soon as your pr uh, print comes out, grab it, double check everything before you turn it in, and then throw it in the gray collection box. As soon as you're done with this, go ahead and work on two directions for SOLIDWORKS problem number 20. Reminder that this video is for your advantage. You can take it, rewind it, play it as fast or slow as you want. Good luck. If you have questions, please ask.